Welcome to the David Alexander Infinite Energy Series. You are watching video 18. My name is Bjarne Trofton and I'm here with my good friend David Alexander. Um, this one is the eighth video in our new format and if you haven't already done so, please check out videos 11 through 17. But for now, David, what are we going to talk about today? We're continuing our series, begun with video 15, where we talk about particular infinite energy devices or systems that have a measured output energy greater than the measured input energy. And this is actually possible if these devices or systems have certain parameters. Examples of these parameters are rotation, transient events, or a magnetic field. And the purpose of these videos, why we're doing this, is to tell people what is possible. We hope that someone out there will see these videos knowing what is possible and actually take that information and invent an infinite energy device. That'd be great. With expanded horizons. So in this video we give an overview of the scientist Bruce De Palma and look at one dramatic over unity experiment he performed using rotation. Rotation. I um, hope my head will not be spinning too much uh, covering that topic but David, before we get into the topic itself, tell us a little bit about Bruce De Palma, the man. So he's more than just a name to our viewers. Certainly. He, he graduated from MIT in 1958. And then he took graduate level courses in electrical engineering and physics at both MIT and Harvard. 
He worked with Dr. Harold Edgerton, and he was the expert that made the famous strobe lighting pictures uh, of things that happened in real, really fast. And then he worked with Dr. Edwin Land, and Dr. Land was the one who started Polaroid Corporation after he invented his camera that could take what in those days was an instant picture. It took a minute for the picture to develop. Nowadays, instant is instant. But I had one of them, and that, and that was really neat. It was like a miracle back then. So, um, De Palma was not only a brilliant scientist, but he designed and built his own experiments generally on the subject of rotation. Okay, so rotation keeps uh, coming up. What exactly did he do in the field of rotation? Uh, how and where did he do it and how, how did he achieve over unity? De Palma believed that a spinning object was fundamentally different than the same object if it was not spinning. He was fascinated with gyroscopes, I know many, many of us have been, and what he was most famous for was being the inventor of what was called the N, that's the letter N, the N machine, which he claimed had an, an over unity of five. So the, the energy coming out, electrical form of that energy was five times larger than the energy put in to, to drive that machine. Now, I, I worked with a group that designed and built our own variation of that machine. We achieved unity, which itself is significant because there's losses, but we did not achieve over unity. So that, that remains a, uh, a mystery. Okay, and um, you know, from what you've uh, mentioned to me about the end machine, it sounds like it and the controversy around it might be a good topic for a future video. Um, but for now, uh, you also told me that you, um, you met Bruce De Palma. That's correct. A friend of mine who was a, a co-builder of our end machine and I met De Palma in 1981 at his home in Santa Barbara, California. And uh, it, it might seem strange that I'm sure we talked about the end machine, but what I remember most from that visit was he had a he had a device about this big or so, and and you poured tap water in the top and it had magnets around the bottom where the water came out, and you collected that water in another glass or cup or whatever. And then he had me try it where he, he said that the magnets changed the taste of the water. So I tried it and he was right. It, <laughs> it was subtle, but, but the, the, you could taste it before it went in and you could taste it after it passed by the, by, through the magnetic fields and it tasted different. You know, David, it is funny that after meeting this guy who did so much work in the fields of rotation, you remember tasting his magnetic water. Um, and, uh, you know, there's more to water and magnetism and rotation than, than we uh, tend to know, uh, I'm sure. But let's set the, the magnets uh, and the water aside for now. And uh, what specifically is it about this rotation experiment you're going to share with us? I cannot explain the mental track he was on that led him to his experiment. But what he did, he, he started out, he had one inch diameter steel balls. Now we can show a close up, but hope, hopefully the camera can see it. Yeah, that's what that is. These are sold as ball bearings. And then his test, his hypothesis, to be tested was that if you could find a way to have one of these spinning at a very high speed, thousands of RPM, and the other one not spinning, and you gave them the same upward thrust, 
like that, let them fly out of these cups, the spinning one would go higher than the non-spinning one. That, that was his hypothesis based on his ideas. Oh. So he designed and built the apparatus, did the experiment, and photographed the result. That seems like a tricky thing to uh, manage, to have one of these spinning at a high RPM, the other one still, and then get them thrust upward in the sa same speed and at the same time. It would be tricky, but he, he, he was very ingenious and he found a way to do that. So we're going to illustrate. Now he used a wood router. That's not a digital router. A router is used for, for wood shaping in a wood shop. So we're, we're going to pretend that this electric drill is a router, okay? And then he had the one cup had like a, a shaft in the bottom and it was held in the chuck of the router like that. And then the other cup, he simply glued to the side of a router. But right? at the same same height, right? They were right. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah same yeah. height. So that was his setup. What he how he had a very simply ingenious way to do that. Now the rest of the experiment. Remember, he was the uh, very familiar with strobe light photography. So he had a strobe light set up in a dark room with a camera with the shutter wide open. So then he would, would, would thrust the router up, the two balls would be thrown up in the air, uh, the one spinning at 20,000 plus RPM, the other not spinning at all. And then he got a picture uh, of the, the strobe pulses reflecting off of these. These are highly polished steel balls. And then he recorded this and he got a most remarkable result. Now, if this doesn't show up, we're, we're probably going to insert a larger view of this, but I'll hold this still. So if you could point with your pen, and what you see here is two tracks of these white dots. The white dots represent the positions where the balls were, shown by the strobe light. And there are two separate tracks here. And the one track, the top of it, is six, if you, if you say it's starting about at the bottom of this picture, is 6% higher than the other track. Now, the height represents energy because if, uh, if you take a one pound object and, and lift it in the gravity field, one foot, you have one foot pound, that's an energy unit. So the height represents the energy that the spinning ball had respect, with respect to the gravity field compared to the non-spinning ball. And it's right there in the and picture and he repeated this many, 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 many dozens of times. And got the same result. Same result. Or, so, well, he sometimes he changed the RPMs. But, or, okay. But he got but that, basically I mean, the same result. That is amazing because you look in the textbook and uh, those two balls should reach the exact same height, regardless of whether they're spinning or not. Like, gravity doesn't that's, care. Right. That's what they would tell you. So, for example, what, what we, you know, we could say about the Palma, based on that type of experiment, he did other experiments that were, were also dramatic, that he was thinking ahead of other scientists. So he had no peers, and when you don't have peers, there's no peer review. <laughs> so to get published in the science journals, you have to pass peer review, but he had no peers, so he never never got published, never had his ideas accepted to, to go in a, in, a, in a main journal. Um, and that's what we keep seeing with these, with these people, these you know, seekers of truth who run up against the same issue with this apparent complex on this planet of superiority and inferiority interacting and uh, the people in the know 
the people in the fields of authority are usually the ones you know who want to be superior and they want to know better and you have a genuine truth seeker like Bruce De Palma show up and they'll have to either ignore him or, or get rid of him. That's exactly right. So his uh, basically for decades he, he was doing original research but frustrated that it was not being accepted by the science community. So in the late 90s he moved to Australia and then he moved to New Zealand. He died there in, in 1997. Okay, so uh, as many of the other pioneers in this field, uh, he has passed, but thanks to the internet, uh, his work is not lost. We still have uh, some good websites put together by friends and associates that have maintained a lot of his work, and we have links to those below the video. Bjorn, uh, I, I totally agree with that. I'm so thankful for the internet, not only for communication, but it's where the work of, of maverick researchers like Bruce De Palma may be stored and accessed by anyone, and, and a place where we put up our hopefully informative videos. Right, and uh, on the topic of informative videos, David, where do you see uh, the next one taking us? I see our next video presenting something that actually happened, which was rotational over unity on a planetary scale. Rotation on a planetary scale. Planetary Seems like my, scale. my head might keep spinning <laughs> for uh, uh, yet another time to come. Um, if you are watching, want to uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, ask a question or leave a comment, please feel free to do so. And uh, until then, we will uh, just say, see, see you, you next video. video.